Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, so, what you see in front of me right now, uh, obviously this down here is a CRT TV, otherwise known as the Sony Trinitron KV13 TR24 that I just made a video of. And you might notice something a little bit weird about it. Well, obviously the circuit board is out of it. And you can see where it once was and where it was connected to the tube here. Um... So it turns out, after I made that overview video of this TR24, I was going to, you know, make sure everything was good with it. Just turn it on one more time. That's why I made the video in the first place. Uh, I started encountering some issues with this that weren't present previously. And I'm not sure why, uh, but all I can say is it started happening. So uh, I decided to take the liberty to remove the board because I found out what the problem was. And... I'm going to go rectify it now. So I'm going to, like I said, just make a video of it just to show you kind of what the problem is and what I did. So obviously, getting the CRT out right here, you have to pop out the anode cap from the top, uh, which sits on top of here. You can't really see it very well. Let me see. There you go. That's where it did set. Um, and of course, you know, when it comes to taking apart these CRTs, you do have to take exercise a lot of caution and safety measures uh, to make sure that you're not going to get shocked. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, I took those safety measures pretty well. Uh, obviously, I have my screwdriver here with the ground wire connected to it to discharge any remaining electricity or any voltage and current from the flyback here. And also, take precaution in avoiding any large capacitors, anything like that, especially when you're reaching from underneath the board. Uh, so, yeah. Also, I do wear rubber gloves as well whenever I'm doing this sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, so I have the board out, and the reason why is because whenever the TV was turned on, uh, sometimes it would be fine, but there were times when you would push in the video inputs here, and the screen would suddenly start popping in and out uh, in, a, in a weird way. Like, the whole screen would shrink a little bit, it gets suddenly brighter, and the audio would start humming more, and it was really unusual. So I thought, what the heck is going on? You know, is there a loose wire? Well, it turns out it's not a loose wire, but it's actually a loose trace on this board. And it's not just one trace, but I've noticed multiple traces on here are actually starting to come apart and start cracking. And that's just a result of fatigue over time. And of course, this TV, like I said, is 23 years old. Or not 23, sorry, 33 years old. Sometimes the solder joints uh, that connect all the electrical components together will start to crack. And I noticed it whenever I was shaking the board up and down just a little bit or moving up and down. Let me see if I can get it in focus here. Yikes, it's a... There we go. Where it says power supply down there. Those wires started to... It, it started doing something weird. It started showing like an electric pop and you could visibly see it. And I noticed obviously that's wrong and it shouldn't do that. So I started investigating to look, to look a little bit more and I'll flip the board here over here in just a little bit. Uh, I'm just, like I said, giving a little overview. But I noticed one of the solder joints had cracked. Uh, so I'm going to be repairing that. And I'm also going to be repairing a few other ones that have become sort of compromised but haven't cracked fully yet that I noticed. So this is going to be pretty neat, but you do get a look at the interior of the board, all the different potentiometers that I couldn't reach previously. I can, I guess, reach now, but I have no need for them because, I mean, all I'm doing is just maintenance, essentially. Uh, won't be replacing any capacitors because I don't have any, unfortunately, even though this would be very nice for a cap replacement uh, for every single one. It currently still works fine, and it still will for... Probably a good few plus years, especially since my friend is going to be the one using this, uh, since it is his TV for Super Smash Bros. Melee. Uh, and he has also a backup Sony Trinitron that I sold him earlier that's also a 13-inch, which was pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get into that right now. Oh, and also I forgot to mention too, so here's the neck board. I also took this off the CRT. Um, you can see all the different potentiometers that are on there. That's for adjusting all the uh, colors as well as the uh, flyback, transformer, uh, voltage and focus, and of course your horizontal uh, convergence. Alright, so I have my circuit board now on my desk here. It's just kind of a weird setup. But 
as you can see, you know, the board looks okay from a distance, but there are some compromised, you could say, solder joints. For example, these ones, these two here are actually cracked. Uh, this one and this one here. And then there's a couple others that I'm going to be checking over. So any one that kind of looks a little weird like this, I'm going to be looking over. And I'm going to also go to the other source of where that one kind of spark happened at uh, to try and fix that as well. But yeah, this board definitely has taken a little bit of abuse over time. Uh, this, this here doesn't really matter. It's just a whole bunch of gunk and crap that's on it uh, from Flux. But... Overall, like, for example, on the on, underneath the RF right here, there's a completely missing trace, which I have no idea if that's supposed to be there or not, uh, considering I never saw any evidence of any uh, traces uh, popping out or anything like that. So, yeah. But effectively, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be going over a lot of these, resoldering them, uh, adding more uh, solder to them, you know, getting them all nice and good. And then afterwards, I'm going to place the board back into the TV and test it out again. So, yeah, you won't you won't see me doing a video of doing it, but essentially speaking, what's going to happen is I have my little cheap little soldering iron, some flux, and then some uh, what is it? Some solder, and then I'm just gonna reflow them. So yeah, I'll tell you how that goes, and then I will have this board back here in a little bit. Oh, and there's also one more thing I forgot to mention. So when it comes to working on these circuit boards, uh, obviously you want to double check and make sure that some of these capacitors that you may be going over uh, definitely don't have any voltage left in them. So what I do is I take this flathead screwdriver and I'll touch the tips on the bottom to just discharge them. Uh, I also, usually I wear rubber gloves too when I do it, but this plastic insulator here, you know, it means that it's just going to go through the path or least resistant path. Uh, so I've already discharged a lot of the huge capacitors uh, and all the ones around where I'm going to be working at just by doing so. Uh, so yeah, that's just another safety precaution that I wanted to mention before doing anything like this. All right, so I just got these two on here and I just kind of wanted to show you a little after of how they look. Obviously, there's still flux residue on it and I'm going to be cleaning that off with some isopropyl alcohol later. But yeah, also this here in particular, I don't think these are actually like electrically or like running electricity through it but this is obviously what's holding this whole video thing in place so i want to make sure that that's secure so that whenever i am pushing my video inputs in it's not going to break anything else and it's actually going to stay steady so that's why i did solder but i'm going to go over some of the other ones now and i'll give you a little before and after look on how they are too all right so i went ahead and redid these ones and this is where the spark i saw was coming from I did notice a couple of these pins here were a bit compromised and were cracking. And of course, these ones here, which are just the wires that carry over, were also sparking a little bit. And I did notice one of them had a crack as well. So I went ahead and resoldered all these. They're all good, nice and flowed. They're going to be pretty dang nice. Also, whenever I did start soldering them, uh, what would happen is I'd press the iron uh, tip to it. And all of a sudden, the solder would just be gone and be left with a hole. So essentially, it's... I don't know if it just like would desolder itself or if there's just no solder left on it. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting experience altogether. All right, so update here. I am pretty much done with this board. Uh, <clears throat> everything went pretty much accordingly as I wanted it to go. Uh, I soldered a lot of, or not soldered, but just reflowed a lot of the solder, added some more on, especially around the flyback here. There was a bunch of pin, or of solder joints that really didn't look too good and in fact somewhere around here I think it is well I can't really find it anymore but <clears throat> around here somewhere uh, a fair amount of them didn't look too good it actually looked more corroded than it did broken um, or cracked and that might have been due to some previous liquid damage that was found underneath here somewhere around this area here but from what I can tell, I got pretty much every single one of the uh, ones that I wanted to get, which is nice. So yeah, the last thing I really need to do is just take this whole board, uh, reinstall it into the TV, and turn it on. So we'll see how that goes. 
All right, so I pretty much got this tube assembled. The only thing left to reinstall now is this here. This is the anode cap. So this is what goes on top of the TV right there. Now, before I did anything, I also put a little bit of dielectric grease on there uh, just to kind of, I, I don't know exactly what it does, but I know it just helps it out a bit. There's a little bit of a dry spot on the edge here. <clears throat> and that was just due to me taking it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to reinstall. Also, one thing to note, so this does have uh, a little clip that hooks in. And whenever you pinch them together, it kind of puts them or pushes them together. And then when it releases, that's how it's secured in here. So I'm going to try and get that on right now and see how it will go. Ooh, there we go. So I clicked into place. Giving it just a little wiggle just and a tug just to make sure that everything's secured. And there you go. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and stick this back where it was. Right there. And there you have it. Completely reassembled tube. I plugged everything back in. Let's go ahead and fire her up. All right, so for the moment of truth, I have my remote here. I just plugged it in, and it did make a little sound uh, whenever it did that. It just always does it. For some reason, it like turns on and off again real quick. I'm not sure why every time you plug it in, but that's a good sign. So let's check it out. All right, look at that. We got display, and it looks... Exactly as it should. Nice. So right off the bat, from what I can tell, there's no more of that issue where the whole screen will just condense in, into itself and start looking weird. Uh, I'm going to play around with it just a little bit more. Whenever I did plug in the composite connectors or connections back here, the whole plate didn't wiggle, didn't move anything like that compared to like what it used to do, which means that it's a lot more secure. And yeah, that... It makes me quite happy because if I gave this TV back to my friend who, you know, this is his TV, not mine, and it came up with this problem, I would be very upset. So I'm very glad that <clears throat> that seems to have worked out so far uh, in terms of this repair. And like I said, all I did was I just reflowed the joints uh, because there was an issue with the video. I think something was, uh, I wouldn't say shorting, but it was not contacting properly anymore so now that it is uh yeah this tv seems to be good i'm gonna give it one more sh uh, check over and then afterwards i'll give my final word all right so it looks like everything so far has worked pretty well. I just double checked everything in 240p test suite uh, as well as got this running. There's going to be one more test that I'm going to do off camera real quick just to make sure everything is okay. But yeah, so far <clears throat> I didn't have any issue that I was having previously. Like I said, the whole screen would just uh, and the audio would hum quite a bit. And now it doesn't do that. Thank God. <laughs> uh, obviously, this TV is going to get transported around quite a bit often. So, being under stress, you know, car rides, everything like that, being an old TV, reflowing solder joints is a very good idea in general, including obviously capacitor replacements for these old TVs. Just general good maintenance and upkeep and taking care of your TV to keep them lasting as long as they can because these CRTs are no longer just some small commodity. They are more of a rarity now because nobody wanted them and everybody got rid of them. And now there's hardly any, I wouldn't say there's hardly any of them left. There's just definitely not as, as, as much compared to as there used to be. So for anybody who likes this hobby, you know, this is another Sony that's, I guess, saved in a way, not really saved, but just maintained. So yeah, that's all I got for you. Uh, yeah, if you like this video, comment, tell me how what you think. If it helps you out repairing your own TV, awesome.
Thank you so much.